Hello everybody and welcome. This is Spoonie with another shipbuilding tutorial for Starbase. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an asteroid avoidance system. That way your ship will automatically move its way out of any oncoming asteroids, which is really important when you're outside of the safe zone because those asteroids can hit your ship and they'll do a lot of damage. This is a really easy system to set up. It only has five lines of YOLAL and the ship in front of you is rather large, but you could accomplish the same thing with as few as four rangefinders. First, I'll demonstrate how this works, and then I'll show you how to build it. So we're going to start by activating our asteroid avoidance system. You can see these green beams, which project a thousand meters out. And if anything comes into contact with one, the ship will react. I'll break one of these beams on the left side, and the ship will move to the right to avoid me. If I break one of the beams on top, the ship will move down to avoid me in that direction. This doesn't require you to slow down in order to work. You can be moving at full thrust and your ship will still automatically move side to side or up and down in order to avoid any oncoming asteroids. This can keep you from having costly repairs or keep you from becoming stranded outside of the safe zone and losing your ship entirely. So we'll set this up on this much smaller ship that we constructed in the first series of tutorials. The only things you'll need for this are a YOLAL chip, a button, two centering levers, and some range finders. I'm only going to use four range finders to set this up, one for left, right, up, or down, but you can use as many as you'd like. It doesn't increase the difficulty, the process is exactly the same, and it doesn't increase the number of lines in YOLAL you'll need. You'll still only need five. So first we're going to set up a control table stand and a control table so that we have somewhere to put our levers. If you already have levers set up for up, down, left, and right, then you can skip this step. So in the asset browser, we're going to search for control and we're going to use the control table stand. And then a control table plate. Next, we're going to place two centering levers. And then we'll need a YOLAL chip. So first we'll need a socket. And then just a basic YOLAL chip will work fine. Don't forget to bolt everything down. And don't forget to add cables to everything. The next step is to name these levers. Again, if you already have left and right or up and down levers set up, you don't need to do this again. But in case you don't, we'll change the lever state field to FCU right left with no spaces. The next lever will change to FCU, up, down, again with no spaces. And if you forget, you can find these values on your flight control unit. And next, we can move on to adding our range finders. For that, you'll just need a hard point and a range finder. We're just going to copy and paste these and I'm going to place one on the left and the right and then one on top and bottom. Remember to bolt these down.
and then we'll need to rename them. So select any of your rangefinders, and we're going to rename the top and bottom fields. Where it says rangefinder state on, we're going to change this to just AAS for asteroid avoidance system. Do this for all four. Next, for any of the rangefinders that you have that will be on the left side, you're going to change the rangefinder distance. The name value will change to AASL. On the right, we'll do the same, but we'll name it AASR. We'll name the top AAST and the bottoms AASB. The last change we'll need to make to the rangefinders is to change the default rangefinder search length. By default, it's set to five, which is a pretty short distance. So we're gonna move it all the way up to its maximum value of 1000. Again, do this for all of your rangefinders. Don't forget to add cables to the back of all of your rangefinders. And now we're gonna set up a button so that we can turn our system on or off. We're gonna use a hybrid button but you can use any button for this. Don't forget to bolt these down. And we're gonna change the button state name value to just AAS. We're gonna change the button style from a zero to a one. If this is set to zero, you'll have to hold the button down. Now that we've got our rangefinders, our button and our levers set up, we can get to the YOLAL. So on the first line of YOLO, we're gonna set up an if statement that allows us to turn our system on or off using the button that we set up. To do that, we're gonna use an if statement that just says if the value of AAS, so colon AAS, don't forget the colon. And then we'll use two equal signs to tell it to look and see if this is true. So if it is true that the value of AAS is one, then go to two else go to one and remember to put end at the end of all of your if statements so what this statement will say is to check and see if it's true that the value of aas is one and if it is go to the second line otherwise go to one which is the line we're on so it will just continue to read this line until it's true that the value of aas is one Next, on the second line, we want to tell YOLAL that if something breaks our top beam, to move the ship down and out of the way. To do this, we're going to use another if statement that says if the value of AAST, which is what we named the current range on our top rangefinder, is less than 1000, then the value of FCU up down equals negative 50. End. This number can range between zero and 100, either positive or negative. If it is positive, it will move the ship up. If it is negative, it will move the ship down. 100 would mean that it is full thrust. So we're gonna start with 50 because full thrust is probably not necessary, but if you had a larger, heavier ship, you may need to set this accordingly. Now we'll test this line of code before we move on. To do that, on line three, we're just gonna write go to one so that it repeats these lines and doesn't waste a lot of our time. But let's enter test mode and see if this works. First, we'll turn on our system and we'll break this top beam and see if it moves down and out of the way. As you can see, as soon as that beam is broken, the ship thrusted itself down and out of the way. Next, on the third line, we're gonna do the same thing, but for the bottom beam. So on line three, we're gonna delete the go to one that we wrote, and we're gonna use the same if statement. If, only this time we'll use the value of AASB for bottom, is less than 1000, then FCU up down equals 50, end. On the fourth line, we'll do the same thing, but this time for the left side, so if, the value of AASL 
is less than 1000, then FCU right left equals negative 50 end. And on the fifth and final line of code, we'll write if the value of AASR, which was our right side, is less than 1000, then FCU right left equals 50 end. We will include go to one on the sixth line, which will just keep this repeating itself instead of reading all of these empty lines of code and wasting time. Now let's enter test mode and see if it works. Ideally, you'll want enough beams that it covers the edges as well as the center of your ship to avoid getting hit head on or clipped by any asteroids, but this demonstrates how it functions. As you can see, the ship is successfully avoiding me whenever I break any of these beams. So for larger ships with multiple rangefinders, the setup is exactly the same and the YOLAL script is exactly the same. All of these left-sided beams share the same name values, they don't need to be individually named. As you can see, the current range on each one of them is named AASL. If any of these drop below 1000, the ship will move out of the way.